futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Well, good day, all. I wrap Steen of Linen Associates with your metals market update with your weekend version for this Friday. And this is the 24th of August, 2018. I'm about 3.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. A powerful update today in the metal markets to end the week. Now, it was a combination, I think, of first China taking some actions to stabilize their yuan versus the dollar. Good news hearing that China is stepping back to buying U.S. crude oil starting in October. How long it'll last, none of us know. It depends if there's more rounds of sanctions or not, or if the U.S. can uh, make peace with China in some manner with China making moves in the U.S. But in any case, energy markets were up. The big culprit that helped the dollar was a massive drop in the dollar of 50 points. That's a lot in the dollar index in one day. A huge rally of 84 points in the euro. And of course, the stock market at all time highs. The stock market I don't do anything with in terms for the metals of wondering what they're doing. They've been a vacuum cleaner of the money from the metal markets. But what really impacted the market is the dovish tone, at least I interpreted that, of Chairman Powell's speech at uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming this morning, where basically he didn't sound as aggressive as a lot of us thought he was going to. And what that did for the bonds and notes, they're stable at the end of the day, but the dollar break gave hope to things priced in dollars like gold, like cocoa, coffee, other markets took off with that. When we go to a monthly chart of gold, and we're coming to the end of the month now, the market for the month is down $17, and it's trying to hold again at a lower Bollinger Band. Now, in the past, I had said it's trying to run into resistance and being stopped from rallies at the upper Bollinger Band. We're now at the other end of that. On the monthly chart, momentum has not begun to turn. It's still pointing down. The bias is still down on this as well, but you are at a support level. When we go to the weekly area chart of closes, you can see how the market has come off the low close of 1161.40 just last week, and for the week we're up near $30. That's a big rally. It doesn't hurt gold to hear all this talk about potential impeachment uh, down the road of President Trump. I don't know if that'll come to be or not, but I was watching financial TV and you know people are saying, Mike Pence would pick it up and they said, the theme seems to be, and it's always anti-Trump, if Trump is gone, will the stock market crash? And the answer they're saying is no. Well, with, those, with just the talk of that, you're giving gold a reason to get a bit of a, a bid into it. You can see how you had that big down week and you've come back up this week. Now, as we come away and we look at last week's high, it was 1207.40, you did take it out this week. So that puts on the swing line. You've got the lower low, you got the lower highs. I think in order to at least give hope that gold is coming to the end of this move on a weekly chart, you've got to take out the last rally high of 12.16.40. And folks, that's only roughly $11 away. It's not a big move to do it. I am not saying that the market, if you did that, is just going to instantly lift to the upside. I will say it breaks that pattern and it puts into play the hundred, I'm sorry, the 200 week moving average of closes right here at 1233. There is a negative to all this. Now let's take a look. Last week you did not have the 18 week average under the 100. You got that on the close this week and that's a bearish signal, not a bullish signal. So take that into account. The market has not been able to stay under the lower Bollinger Band. It's popping back up here. And again, I will stick my neck out and say that 1233 area is a very important area. That's the 200 week average. And for the first time, momentum is trying to pop back up. Now, if it pops, it'll do so by closing over 20. And as it does that, you've got to look and see, can you pop through that 1216 area to at least take the weekly chart and negate its look. That will be important. 
When you come to the gold-silver ratio, it's stuck its neck out. It's back to 8160, as you can see. It's back into a resistance zone that it's had before. Normally, when I see metal markets as a group bottom out, it's not with the gold gaining on the silver. That doesn't mean it can't be, but it's not normally. Another chart that is trying to turn momentum is in the GLD, like the futures, but it too didn't get over 20. It too needs to get over a last rally high, which in this case is 116.84, and from where you're at, that's quite a ways off. The GDX, the weekly chart of the gold miners, well, the market is trying to get back over the lower Bollinger Band. Momentum has not turned. This chart is still very, very weak. For the week, you were up uh, 24 cents, not much at all. Silver climbing back into the range of the lower Bollinger Band. Momentum has not turned. The weekly chart has not turned either. Everything on this chart is still in the bear camp on the weekly side. In the copper, everything is still on the weekly chart bearish. When you go to the daily charts, they're not that way, so you're getting some divergence between the two. You have lower highs, lower lows. Obviously, copper was strong today. In fact, all the metals were strong as the dollar took a hit. In the platinum market, you're climbed back within the Bollinger Bands. Momentum is not turning, and the bias remains down. In the palladium market, this on the daily charts is by far the strongest of everything. You'd have to take out right here the 941 level to negate the uh, swing line. Momentum, however, is diverging from that swing line. It's pointing up, and the market held very nice. The lower Bollinger Band and the 100-week moving average of closes. Last, the dollar index. It's correcting. And again, it has divergence. Why? Momentum has broken down, yet the market still has higher lows, higher highs. It ran last week into the upper Bollinger Band, and now it has pulled back under the 100-week average. What will it do at the 18-week average becomes the big question. If you take out 93.67, and that's quite a ways from where you're at right now, that would probably do the dollar in for quite a while. But the president did succeed in jawboning on the dollar and has basically driven it down by himself a little bit. And he got help today, obviously, from his buddy, the Fed chair. I say that facetiously. Now, what you're seeing behind me is my charting course. For those of you that want to go back and enjoy the rest of the summer as you get yourself going, it's fun. It's six hours of videos. You see what I do, then you do the same thing. Our charting software does include the historical data that I use in this. Then in the mornings, you're going to have your normal, your charts that are up to date. You're going to take a look at what I do on charts every morning, and then you're going to do the same thing. So I bring this in and I can answer the questions you might have. You're going to learn a technique using Bollinger Bands, moving averages, something I don't show in my videos called window envelopes are going to be involved in there. I'm going to introduce this year counter trend plays that when you lose an embedded reading, how to play for that, it breaks the normal rules that you do here. But it's a special event trade, and that's what I'm going to be bringing on as we move forward. But you get the market research, the course videos, my morning video, the charting software. Charting software alone is $60 to $70. My research is $60 a month. The whole course is $129.95, and it includes that for that time frame. So if you're interested, simply call. My staff will take care of it. You can go to our website over the weekend and go under the word education. That will bring you right to the question and answer page pages. You'll see how it all works and what I try to accomplish with you. And you can click up here to get over there. One, two, three. I'm I. Rapstein. You have yourself a good day and I will talk to you Monday.